Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Miss Jamie and welcome to The Home Show. I'm so excited because this week we're gonna be learning all about miracles. If you're wondering what a miracle is, it's something amazing that only God can do. And this week, I'm excited because we're learning about a little boy, a young boy who shares his lunch. Not his Oreos that his mom packed, not fruit snacks, but actually fish. I'm so excited to see this video. Now let's watch. It's Miss Lily. I'm so excited to be here with you today. What's new in your life? Anyone starting up sports? Anyone trying new recipes out there? Anyone tried a new vegetable that they didn't like? Probably all of us. Um, oh my gosh, it is so great to be here with you today. Right before I got here, church kids, I got into a pretty big fight with my siblings. Does anyone have brothers and sisters out there? Raise your hand, anyone, anyone? Probably a lot of us. And shout out to the only kids out there who don't have siblings. You guys are awesome. Well, church kids, who thinks that usually, sometimes, most all the time, their siblings do stuff before them? I know in my family, there's my dad, there's my mom, there's my older sister, Vivian, there's me, ding, Miss Lily, and there's my younger brother, Brandon. I remember growing up, church kids, they would always do stuff before me. I definitely know Vivian would because she was the oldest, she was the leader, she was the boss, so she got to do everything. And then you got my younger brother, Brandon, who's the little baby of the family who needs to be taken care of and needs to be pet and needs to have food all the time to make sure he's good and happy. But then there was me, Miss Lily, the middle kid. Anyone a middle kid out there? I love you guys. Because if you know if you're a middle kid, you guys are the peacemakers. You don't really get into any drama. You like things the way they are. But sometimes when you need to step in and say something, you definitely will. And that's why we're the best. But just kidding. All of you guys are awesome. So church kids, I remember growing up, I would sometimes also feel like overlooked. Like my parents didn't really care about me. Maybe they even forgot about me. Because whenever we went to an amusement park, I would be the one sitting by myself. Because like I told you, there's five of us. Meaning my mom would have... Um, dibs on sitting with my brother because she wanted to make sure he was good. And then my sister would be like, Dad, I want to ride with you. So then my dad would ride with my older sister, leaving me, the pinky, all alone in the back of the roller coaster cart by myself, strapped in alone, sitting like this. Wee! I would always feel kind of left out, church kids. Has anyone else felt like that? Well, did you know that no matter how big, no matter how small, no matter what you look like, where you've come from, Jesus, our best friend, loves you. He loves me. He loves you. He loves every single person in this world, church kids. It's incredible. And when we go back into the Bible, we can see how amazing Jesus is and how many miracles that he performed for so many groups of people. He would heal sick people. He would help blind people be able to see again. He would help old people, young people, poor people, wealthy people. He would help everyone. Well, church kids, in this Bible story, you might have heard of it. It is one of my all-time favorites because when Jesus, the superstar, celebrity, Jesus, coming into town, everyone would want to meet him, see him, smell him, almost touch him, because they just wanted to be like with him because he was so amazing. Can you imagine if your favorite celebrity, maybe your favorite YouTuber, maybe your favorite actor or actress or sports player came, would you want to hang out with them? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So that's what everyone felt about Jesus. So when Jesus came into this town, everyone heard about it. News spread so quick that thousands of people would just come and be like, we're gonna go see Jesus. You gonna go see Jesus? Sweet. Are you gonna go see Jesus? Awesome. So they would come meet Jesus on this grassy hill. Jesus was obviously so excited and he would tell all of his amazing, miraculous stories to these people on this grassy lawn all night long. And in the Bible, it says that evening, 
the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, That isn't necessary. You feed them. But we only have five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Jesus took the five loaves of bread and two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted. Well, church kids, let's back up a little bit. When it was nighttime and everyone was like, oh my gosh, Jesus, whoa, these stories are crazy. Oh, girdle, girl, girl, girl. That's the sound of your stomach. Girl, girl, or blah, 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 blah. Super hungry, right? Everyone was hungry and was like looking around like, uh, what are we gonna eat? Do we have to go all the way back home to eat? And Jesus was like, no. So then Jesus would look at the disciples and say, you guys, we have to feed them. We can't let them go home. But the disciples didn't have any food. So they would look out and be like, who has food? Who is the person with the five loaves of bread and two fish? And in the back, there's this little boy who had his lunchbox and was like, maybe this would help? He gave all that he could. This little boy had his lunch in a little lunchbox and was like, I don't know if this will do anything, but I guess here. And the disciples were like, well, it's not a lot, but... I guess we can try to feed people with it. And that's when Jesus blessed the food. He blessed the five loaves of bread and two fish. And from that point on, people would come up and be like, okay, I'm hungry. And then Jesus and the disciples would give them the food and they would go back. And every single person who would come up would get food and go back and eat the food and would feel so, so full. But then at that point, everyone's thinking, wait, wait, wait a second. There were only four five loaves of bread and two fish that could basically feed one person. How is it that all of these thousands of people are getting fed? And they're getting like fed to the fullest. They're so full. It's because Jesus can do the most amazing, miraculous, impossible things that is so easy for him to do, but is the most amazing thing because those people came to watch Jesus. They loved Jesus. They trusted Jesus. They wanted to hear what he had to say. And Jesus, being the super awesome, amazing superhero he was, blessed the food. And at that point, it multiplied. And it multiplied so much, they had so much left over. And you know where that all came from? It came from that little boy who was willing to give all that he had, the five loaves and two fish, And Jesus did so many things with it. Church kids, did you know that wherever you're at in your life, whatever you have to offer, Jesus wants to use that. He wants to use your gift and he wants to multiply it. And if you're thinking, multiply it now? What? Jesus wants to use your gift and he wants to use it to help everyone else. He wants to use it so that you're able to touch so many different people's lives, people in your life now, people that you haven't even met yet, people that you will meet. Jesus wants to use you to help all the people around you. And if you're anything like me, church kids, when I was young and I was learning about Jesus, I wasn't quite sure about Jesus yet. I didn't know if he was my best friend yet. I was thinking, well, why would Jesus care about me? I'm just like some girl who's Vietnamese who has siblings and a family. Like, why would Jesus like want to use me? Or like, why would Jesus care about me? Well, it's actually the opposite. Jesus, Jesus knows you, knows you by name and wants to use you to help so many different people. And that's what happened. When I was a kid and I thought that, Jesus went into my heart and was like, Lily, I love you. I chose you to be a part of my big family. And now, church kids, I get to talk to all of you and tell you how much Jesus loves you and wants to use what you have to offer to help so many different people in your own life. So I want to pray today. I want to pray 
that if you're feeling like me when I was a kid, thinking like, well, I'm not special or I don't know, I'm just kind of like a kid who's just kind of normal and average. No, Jesus wants to use you. He wants to bring you into his family. He wants you to open his heart up to him. So let's pray. And then we are going to ask Jesus to be our best friends forever. Jesus, thank you so much for today. Thank you for every single church kid listening to this story. It is such an amazing reminder where this little boy who had barely enough food to feed himself would give it to Jesus and the disciples to then bless thousands and thousands of people. Jesus, I just pray that you get to use every single one of these church kids to use their gifts, their talents, what they have to offer to then help all the people around them. And church kids, I just pray for the kids who aren't sure maybe that you're their best friend or maybe they are thinking about opening their heart. I just pray that you speak to them today and remind them of how much you love them and how much you want to be best friends with them. And if you want to be best friends with Jesus today, I want to pray for you. Jesus, I pray for every church kid who wants to be your best friend, who wants to open their heart up to you. I pray that you speak to them. I pray that you remind them of how worthy they are and how loved they are because they are going to do the most amazing things through you. In Jesus' name, amen. That was an awesome story. We had so much fun together today. And did you know that fun can continue throughout the week? We actually have faith-based, encouraging stories for you to listen to at home or on the go. And if you want to watch the weekly service with your friends, get your friends together and download our toolkit, which has fun games, discussion questions, and activity pages for you guys to do. Check out all of this and more at churchhome.org churchkids. We love you so much and can't wait to see you next time. Bye.